Hi, my name is Safi, and you're listening to Professional Ramla Podcast. This is season two, episode one, where I'm going to just have a conversation with America. And maybe uh, Americans, if we get to that topic, or if that if we slipped into my conversation with myself. But yeah, that is what it's going to be. It's just going to be like a lot of shit that, like, honestly, I did my Dear White People episode, but now this time it's just like America, because I feel like this is an um Yeah, so America, let's talk. I don't know. I try to make my own intro music. Not gonna work. Yeah. So I will never do that. I might. Mm, interesting. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. So my first thing, my first um point I have on my notes catalog. Oh my god, I'm gonna stop. Um, is the racism in America and how like everyone continues to gaslight the racism in America. But like it was so long ago. But like just in the 70s, like. Women could barely vote. Um, black women could barely vote. A hundred years later, um, we get our first um, black vice president. And so just like, people love to... So the racism in America is constantly being gaslighted by white Americans. Oh no, yeah, and just being like, well, you guys have the right to vote, so like, what else do you guys want? Or like, like, but you can continue to see how the racism is still prevalent with them, how, like, white supremacists are allowed to just do anything, basically, and barely get any punishment. I only get punishment because, like, the wild, wild public is, like, saying something. If they do get punishment, they're not really getting anything. Like, um, the white supremacists who shut up schools, um, I be- was it 2020 that, were, like, there was a lot, every other month was, like, a new sh- um, school shooter? Um, so, and you just continue to see these, um things of like and how of like and of like the, i think i believe like the parkland shooter has been hasn't really hasn't gotten um convicted yet because his innocence is proven guilty but everyone obviously saw that he w- shut up the school but he still hasn't got his conviction yet so he's still like it so it's just like he should be in death penalty and like how like the racism in america is like you see a lot of these like white supremacy people um shooting up like mosques or synagogues or schools but yet um, nothing's happened to them but like a group of um muslim supremacists um um did 9 11 and yet every single muslim is literally been ostracized, harassed every day. We were like Muslim women who were to her job are, are literally like ostracized in schools and everywhere they go and like they feel unsafe in certain places if they're not like with a group of friends or even if they are they still feel very much unsafe. And um you see like Muslim men who have like beards or like look I don't even know what looking Muslim look like but like stuff like that and like People of other cultures um don't feel comfortable to like go to places like in 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 2021 when we are right now there's multiple places in the south where like black people queer people just anybody who's not white it's called sundown towns and cannot go there after after like six o'clock at night until like this um or else they will come out dead and it, everyone knows about this but yet um it's seen as normal like. But like, so I'm like, so there's whole certain places that people that people like me and core people cannot go to because you can get killed or just because of who you are and you. So it's just that whole crazy. I would never fucking go to Alabama or like any. But like, I'm just saying like, there are black people. There are a lot of black people who live in Georgia, or Alabama, and, st- and places like that, and still um they like they cannot leave their house like past four o'clock because. Fuck, it got um they could get killed and stuff like that, and so just, you know, and like everyone's just fine with that, like the Congress is just fine with them. Just like those people that live in those sun, those white people that live in those sun downtown should be should should be in dead penalty if they're literally harassing um harassing anyone that's not white and like they literally just want that place to be a white supremacist town with only whites allowed. So just like. And, like, it's just seen as normal. Like, we're just going to just, like, be like, yeah, that's normal. There's nothing absolutely wrong with this. And, yeah. Like, and also, like, another point I have is, like, how every single person in America is discriminated. Black, white, Asian. No, I said white. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Black, Asian, um, Mexicans, Hispanics. I just know. Uh, um, just, like, every single group of people, queer people, are, like, discriminated. Like, America continues to find different people to discriminate against over and over again for like people who are not just like i'm just like 
that's so interesting. Like, with Jewish people, like, America went over to Germany during the Hitler time and, like, saved them, but it saved the Jewish people who were in the camps. But then when um, Jewish people were immigrating over to America just um, to get, like, a better life and stuff like that, they were discriminated against of, like, places like, um, of, like, we don't want, like, um, a Jewish person or stuff like that. And, like, with Irish people, Irish people were so discriminated against with, like, no Irish um, allowed in this business, no blacks allowed in this business. But I'm just like, aren't Irish people, like, why? So just, like, why people, like, have, the, um, have kind of, like, cr created, like, this hierarchy of, like, what oh of what's like proper in a way and what you're supposed to do and so it's just like this i i'm not even sure like what the hierarchy of it is because i'm like jewish people are mainly white i know there's a couple of like poc um poc jewish people and stuff like that but like jewish people are mainly white and they're still discriminated against it there's like nazi like in the capital there was like nazis there and like that's extremely scary to a lot of jewish people just like seeing openly nazis people were not having nazi tattoos having Nazi symbols on their shirts, like, there was this one guy that had, like, a, something that, like, I forgot what it was, but it was, like, it basically stood for, like, kill all Jewish people, basically, so I'm just, like, you know how scary it is, like, black people have already been living for this, for the, and then Jewish people are, like, white, are also white, but, like, still very much discriminated against constantly, and it's just, like, America finds new people to discriminate against, if you're not the rich and wealthy, they will find a reason to discriminate against you. And even, like, the um, the white people that live in, like, the trailer parks, like, aka the white, like, trash or whatever. And, like, they, they um, like, they're poor, but we still fucking discriminate against other people. But I'm just like, y'all, just, uh, your poverty, um. But it's just like, so it's just like, white people continue to find the, like, new groups of people to discriminate against no matter what. And I'm just like, what is the reason? Like, what is the reason, babe? And that, that whole thing, and, like, how anti-Semitic, it's Semitic, um, Semitic, um, God, I, I just said it, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism, um, is extremely prevalent in, in American culture, just, like, a lot of people who don't like Jewish people, but I'm like, what the fuck has Jewish people ever done, like, like, even what has black people did, and I'm, I'm like, if I really think about it, what did black people ever do to, um, what did black people ever do to, like, America? Like, I feel like the only reason white people are racist towards black people is because white people wanted, black, the black people wanted basic human rights. That's the only fucking reason I could ever think of. It was, like, of why, because, like, they're free. So that's why white people are like, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> and then it's just, like, that whole thing of, just like, the whole, I don't, what's the gist of racism? What's the gist of anti-Semitism? I'm not, like, why was that, why is that even a thing? Because I'm just like, anti-Semitism, is, is there like, why don't I crime? What the fuck? I'm just like, God, it don't make sense. It really don't make sense. And then also how the anti-blackness was created in, um, in American society through the colonialism and like stuff like that. And like, what? And like how every like um um American um, um white Americans basically went all around the world and to spread anti blackness of like these black people are lazy they're like ghetto they're ratchet I mean, basically all of that so that's why a lot of people like abroad and stuff like that and even in African countries um don't like black Americans because of that little stereotype of like them being but like how um it's the only reason why they thought they were like lazy or like stuff like that. It's not, it, because black Americans has to still do their work anyway, because if they didn't do their work during slavery, they would get whipped. So, I, so white people would just spread rumors for no reason, because, like, nobody wants to get whipped, and the fact that they whip, like, 50-year-old men, um, black men, and just, like, I'm just, like, it's so dehumanizing of someone, like, um, younger than you whipping you, and just, like, that whole thing of just, like, dehumanizing the fuck out of black people and then now the spread of anti-blackness of like every single group of people and even Africans hating black Americans and that constant thing of just like that just continue to spread um I'm gonna talk about like BLM and All Lives Matter and then basically how like every single um, um movement that black people get it has to be counter argued like BLM with All Lives Matter was like BLM, BLM was basically just saying was basically just saying, stop killing me, um, please, I stop killing people who look like me, stop killing my family, stop doing it. All I mother was like, no, I don't want that, so we're going to stand with the police. And then I'm um, doing the capital protest, they fucking go beat up the protest. It don't make sense. I'm just like, 
y'all are weird. Y'all sound weird and just that whole, that whole thing of like every single thing that black, like with the say her name was for black women because like black women were also getting killed as the same way that black men with police brutality and stuff like that. So black, say her name. But thank God Contra was like, well, all, men, all women are getting killed, so ha ha. And then with the whole capture thing, it was like the women who were killed after the police was like, um, leave this building. People were using them um, for like say her name and stuff like that. But I'm just like, leave this stuff that's for black people alone and just can I like everything that black people start has to be counter argued no matter what. And just when black people are like stop killing me, you're like, no, I don't feel like it. And it's just like, uh, well, that's not my business. And that whole thing is like. The counter protests and hashtags for every single thing. Black people are like, um, stop black fishing. And then this recent thing I saw, um, I saw on Twitter that started on TikTok of like, P uh, Asian Asian Americans are like calling um, calling black black women um, black women out for Asian fishing because of like um, mono eyelids and stuff like that. But I'm just like, you do realize you can't call someone out for something they're like biologically born with and that whole thing of like Asian fishing. But I'm just like. I don't think Asian fishing is a thing. I don't think black um, um, Asian fishing is definitely a thing if white people do it. But black and um, black women are not doing it. Like they, they, um, that's how their eyes are just oh, uh, and that's just so it's like unless they're like outwardly going on to because like also the reason why I said like black women can't really Asian fish or whatever because the, there was the, there wasn't any power power dynamic. White women are, are black fishing because they realize that black women are, are like black women are starting to get like a little bit of clout. So they're like, I want to make my, um, I don't want to be black, but I want to be racially ambiguous. So like to get more roles. And you see how white women are getting roles that black women are were supposed to have because of making of how they're making their skin dark and how they're like trying to make their hair curly by using all these fucking products and stuff like that so like but with black women and asian fashion they're not getting roles that asian women are supposed to have so like that whole dynamic isn't lining up because white women are getting the roles that black women are supposed to have when they're like trying to make their skin darker and just saying it's a tan but like um, if black women are supposedly Asian fishing, they're still, they're not gonna get the roles that Asians are supposed to have because their skin is still, it's still, it's still dark, it's still very much dark, so they're not gonna take, get the roles that, um, Asian women are, we're, we're supposed to have. So, if that makes a little sense of how, of why Asian fishing is not a thing, and that whole, and that whole culture and stuff like that, of like, Asian, 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 Asian think they're doing something, they're like, y'all, yeah, so what if we, um, I'm just like, I, I hope that kind of makes more sense of, like, how Asian fishing cannot be a thing because of that constant thing of just, like, yeah, because there wasn't any dynamic that you know, black women are getting over Asian women and stuff like that and that type of, um, and that type of perspective, if, if, if that helps. Um, and now I'm going to kind of talk about the capital protest. When the capital protest first started, I was like, I'm going to stay out of it. I thought it was just going to be on, like, political side of TikTok. Not TikTok. I'm not TikTok anymore. Um, political side of um, Twitter. And I was just like, I don't, I don't even look at those hashtags. It's boring. But then my whole family was, like, watching the, t the CNN. I was in my room. I was just like, I'm chilling. And I go on Twitter, and it's all over my timeline. Pe but, like, people are making fun. People were making jokes. I was like, I was cackling, laughing. But I was like, I did not want to be in this white people's business and stuff like that. But if you really just think about it, it just shows how like white Americans can do anything they want because if it was any if it was black people that even stepped to the gate um if it was black people that even stepped to the gate they would have been dead like dead and like I heard that they're like um not like um catching people and putting people in prison but like the guy who stole the thing from Nancy Pelosi's death is only facing like one year in prison while someone who was spray painting us a sign on the floor in the BLM protest is facing life in prison. So you just see, like, um, so I'm protesting for people to stop killing people like me. But yet, yeah, someone who literally goes into Nancy Pelosi's death, and that's a, and then that whole capture building is supposed to have the most, it's the most supposed to have the most, um, what do you call it? Security is not. And honestly, I don't feel like the capture building has the best security because I feel like. Um, the, I feel like the few security there is just to be, put fear in people of color to, like, don't step up there. Because I, I think I went to the Capitol building, like, senior year or something for, like, a day. And it was just, like, the fear of, like, don't go anywhere if you're not supposed to or stuff like that. But, like, honestly, the security don't seem that great. Like, 
So I feel like that's how it was easy. It was easy for white people to do it, but if any other race of people did that, they would be uh, dead, dead, dead as fuck. <laughs> and it's that whole thing of just like how they continue to like put fear in people of color. And like, like I went to like um, Wisconsin. Um, I think it was Madison. Yeah, and like the Capitol building that was in Madison, Wisconsin, Madison was um, it's like. I felt if you could not go past the stairs because there was like only a cop car right there, but I'm just like, but the, uh, my family was like, ooh, we're only gonna stand in the back, but like this other white woman was like all the way on the top of we're just like, yeah, we're not the same, we're, ne- we're, we're um, and it was um, <laughs> but like, so it's just like that constant thing of like how like, um, you, uh, like black people and POC know we're never on the same way as um as white people. Because, like, we never, like, white people can get away with way more than we do. And, like, how, like, black parents have to, like, literally, like, be like, don't be around the wrong crowd or stuff like that. But, like, white people, if they get stopped by police, like, I hear all these, like, white people telling, like, different stories of how, like, um, they, they were speeding and then, like, a cop was just, like, just gave me, like, a warning and stuff like that. But, like, you've seen how a lot of, like, black boys and a lot of black people in general have gotten killed um, for, like, way more minor stuff that they did on the road. So it's just that, that constant fear that, like, what America has placed onto people of color and people who like, look like me type of thing. It's just so, so very interesting and stuff like that. And, like, how they continue to perpetuate that fear. And I guess the capital protest just showed, just, like, showed everyone's, like, and the, with the BLM protest that happened, like, a couple months before that, was just, like, there was, like, the National Guard was already out there in, like, three hours when the protest started and stuff like that. But then the National Guard took their fucking time when going to the Capitol protest. It just reminded like the privilege that we would never have and the privileges that we, we, we um we, that's why we continue to protest for. I also, I also want to talk about how like does everything in America have to be protested for? Like you want to get a living wage, um, you have to protest it. You want to get this, you have to be protested for. Like I'm just like does y'all does everything have to like be put? I'm like. Shouldn't it, shouldn't we just have like basic human rights? And like I posted this on my Twitter yesterday of like, who the fuck made America a first world country? Cause who child? Cause what are the criteria of a first world country? Like what exactly are the criteria and stuff like that? What makes a f- like because I'm not quite getting it. What is it, babe? Um, cause because like. Um, shouldn't a first world country, because I heard, like, Denmark, I feel like those Denmark, Norway, and stuff like that should be, uh, um, all first world countries, um, because, like, America, um, doesn't have, um, how, not every, uh, the, um, the amount of, um, homelessness that's in America currently is huge, so not everyone has, has a home, not everyone has, um, money or, t- or food to have three foods on their table, three, um, um, three meals on each, three meals each day on the table. Not everyone has water, access to water, because even, like, going to the gas station, like, soda is cheaper than water. Um, not everyone has, um, access to, like, food, basically, like I said. Uh, so I'm like, what are the criteria? And even, like, currently, the current debate that's going on Twitter and, like, in slash Congress is what is a livable wage? Because I think, um, Joe Biden is plan on raising like fifteen dollars an hour. But like in America, like I in because um I live in before college I lived in Illinois but Chicago. Illinois minimum wage is eight dollars an hour, but Chicago since it's such a big city and the the cost of living is higher, it's about thirteen dollars an hour. But not every not even every job pays you thirteen dollars an hour because I remember like the McDonald's that's by my house is pays ten dollars an hour to like high school students and just like people who just plan on just working there so i'm just like ten dollars is not a fucking min- a living wage and like they're currently debating whether because i think i was is, um minimum wage is 750 and i think that's why what, what i'm getting paid in my in my school's library like 750 but like i don't really care because i'm not really like um financially like dependent on it so right now but like um they're currently debating whether 750 is a living is a living living is a livable wage in a capitalistic society like tell me how the fuck that makes sense how the hell can you live on seven dollars an hour when like half 
have to um, like I think in Iowa because it's such a small place it's like the most you, you can get is like 400 and that's like a really shitty apartment that's going to get that probably has rats and not very in a good place but like in Chicago like the most um you cannot get an apartment lower than seven hundred dollars and seven hundred dollars is like a small ass studio that has that definitely has rats in there and so it's just like and I was watching this other video by um the YouTuber um, named as told by Kenya so she was basically saying how she used to work in um subway and um this uh, she was a high school student but this other woman um uh, had to work two jobs because like the um the the pay that they were paying them was like seven dollars an hour. So she was like, "I've never made tw over twenty k working this job, and I've been working here for a couple of years." So she she has to get a second job in order to basically live. So like she works in Subway at, in the morning, in like during the daytime type thing, and then she works in another job at night. So like, where do you end up getting that time for yourself? So it's like working seven dollars an hour is like you have to work the entire twenty four hours, and you don't ever. So, and like America also then likes also having um mental health care accessible to people and only a couple people can get mental health care because even like public insurance like kind of fucking sucks anyway so that so that that's just that thing of like who who is the american system for and it just comes to like the white people white americans and in even not all white americans even have access to any to any of this so it's just like Seven dollars is not a livable wage, especially since it's so expensive. And they're like, well, if we increase the um, if we increase the um, minimum wage, that means the like cost of living is gonna go up. But that's the problem. The cost of living is already going up because like in two thousand nine was seven dollars, and like the cost of living was low. But in two thousand nineteen, the cost of living was high, but yet the minimum wage was still low and was still the same. So I'm just like. How are you going to increase the cost of living when you're not going to increase the minimum wage? And like, how people like go to college and then um and then you can get a better job. But like, if every single person is going to college, the economy, the people, the um, amount of people who are hiring is not going to um um ah uh, shit. And so like the um, the cost of living is also not going to go. What was I about to say? I forgot. Chart. Um, so it's like if the living wage it's like the living the cost of living started going up so why so people are like, Well, we can um why do I keep forgetting it? Um so the cost of living started going up anyway and it's just like people so and oh yeah. So like a lot of people are like all going to um uh so like the job economy is gonna is so high that like they can't hire everybody, so I'm just like what is your point? And if no one is working in these fast food places, if we all like our fast food places. So like, then who's gonna be, who's going to be, um, what do you call it? Who's gonna be, who's gonna be at the store or stuff like that? And I know people are like, well, they're gonna replace it with robots and stuff like that. The future like, um, um, goes up or whatever. Or, like we go to the future stuff like that. But I'm just like, someone's still gotta operate that bitch. And so it's, and it's that whole constant thing of just like. Um, well, just go to college, but, like, college is not for everybody, and people who want to save up for college, because financial aid doesn't give you jack shit. So, it's like, you want to save up for college when you're in high school, but, like, they barely give you any money, because, like, you still got to go to school, you got to do your homework, and that's why a lot of people who have jobs in high schools don't end up, um, doing well in school, because they're like, if I want to make up something livable... Because I think people also forget the fact that there are people who provide for their families. And not, not everyone has, like, a two-parent household who work and stuff like that. And there are people who have to, like, provide. And there are people who are d undocumented and with only one household. And, and like, as soon as they, they, they're in the age to get a job, they have to get a job in order to provide for their family. And I know a couple. I know, like, one of my friends who, um, who did that. I'm just like, you can't. It's just like schools want you to do so well in school. But you're like. How can I do so well in school and I also have to provide for my family and stuff like that? So that whole thing of like, seven dollars is not a lot. And like Denmark, McDonald's workers are getting paid twenty two dollars an hour. I'm like, that is what you're supposed to get paid. And also like, Amer America, America, the way Americans been treating the pandemic of, as acting like the pandemic is a choice. And like, you see a lot. I like, I see a lot of kids in my Snapchat like partying. Like on New Year's, I saw this one guy. Who was basically um was like basically it looked like a concert. No one was wearing a mask, and I'm just like, 
And then this other girl too, I see her every other, every day, I see her at a party. And then one time I decided to send out this sticker saying like, um, um, good, thank you Mr. Rebel for not wearing a mask. She looked at my story and blocked me. <laughs> she blocked me so fast. I was like, mm. yeah, but I'm just like that constant thing of like people acting like, America made, made people act like the pandemic is a choice. Of like, wearing a mask is a choice. Um, keeping people safe is a choice of just like, well, I'm young, so I'm not gonna die, so like, fuck my, fuck, fuck the other people around me. Basically, that's what they just said. And I'm, so, one thing I'm grateful for is that, like, the fact that I have not got uh, COVID, I know what, I'm not putting that up to the universe, I'm, I am I want to be safe. I've, like, been in my, I've basically been in my, in my dorm the entire time. And that whole constant thing of just, like, of, like, how America is treating the pandemic as a choice, and, like, how, like, I did not know this, but, like, Australia, Canada, Denmark, Norway, they basically give their citizens, like, $2,000 every two weeks. So, like, Australians have made, like, 24K um, in this pandemic. While, America, while um, like, a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, Congress and was still deciding whether um, $600 is a good stimulus package. I'm just like, are you guys stupid? And so it's just like, and, and then like, with that stimulus package, they still are not giving everybody, because college kids can't get it. Um, um, people who are, not, who are still filing like dependent, 17 year olds who are still fucking children, kids, uh, don't get the, um, um, parents still don't get the, um, the package for them. So I'm just like, so you're at $600. And like, for like example, my household is like, with like five, six people in it, and the only p- person that's getting the money in my house is f- uh, is my sister. So like my parents get one, obviously. So like six hundred, six hundred, and then um my little sister was eight. But then what about me and my sister? I'm like we're still college students, and like we don't. But I heard that like college students get like um the CARES Act that goes to the college. So I think you that apply for it, the college automatically give it to you. So yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so it's just that, that whole constant thing of just like how America is treating the pandemic as a choice. Like the pandemic is not a choice. And that whole constant thing of like, and also debating whether $7 is a fucking livable wage. Are you fucking mentally ill? And then people, it's like people want poor people to, people want people, people to struggle. And they're like, well, if you struggle, that's how you get. I'm like, bitch, housing should be a fucking human right. Um... A livable wage should be a human right. Having food on your table should be a livable right. Should be a, that's all basic human rights, and not everyone in America has that. So, like, what makes it a first world country? And that's my question for this episode of like, what makes a first world country? Like, so like, do you just does it just have to have white people in it, and that's what a first world country is? Because what, what is it? Because it, it makes no sense to me and stuff like that. It's like. America, and also, like, America, like, kind of, like, chooses money over people. Like, through the economy, like, they chose, like, to make, um, fast food workers, like, stay home and not work. Or when the pandemic was, like, first starting, was, like, um, I, I we don't want our economy, economy to work. And that's why they, um, they let, uh, like, I think it was, like, was it June or something like that? That's when, like, the first lockdown was over because they saw that the economy was they're going down. They were, like, oh, we can't have the economy go down. But I'm just, like... So you care more about, about the economy than you care about your citizens. So American continues to choose in, choose um, its citizens. It's uh, I said, oh I wish I choose money over its citizens constantly and that whole thing. And then how like um, Trump is allowed to throw a tantrum every fucking day. And but if Obama did even a slight of what he did, he would have never got a second term. Like Obama had to pick Joe Biden as his vice president because, oh, um. Because um the, um because America was not gonna let a black man run, and if he picked another black man as his vice president, oh he's not getting a second term. He might even get impeached impeached just because America's racist. So it's just like um Trump is allowed to throw one every day on um on uh, Twitter, and the whole thing of like people saying like why didn't like the social media ban him before? It's like I don't blame them for once because. Um, they probably had to, this entire four years, they probably had to go through, like, an entire legal team with, like, is, um, can we get sued if we, um, if we, um, 
if we block or um block or delete the president's Twitter because I don't think they've ever had to deal with that because like Obama was like the first like modern president and stuff like that like they lived in the modern era and so and like they really do anything on Twitter but like so like we're like oh like what are the rules with presidents and stuff like that and I like that's what basically they will have to do with the whole law thing was like yo and then I'm just like yo Trump is out I wonder how he's communicating you know he's damn near he know he created a dead account and I feel like he's probably in like a MAGA group chat be like yo this is me I'm back but like don't tell anybody and stuff like that so like Trump is allowed to throw a tantrum and allowed to like not condemn white supremacy and still be in, in, in president and stuff like that so I'm just like that's ho- a whole lot of interesting I'm yeah, yeah again I'm back editing this and I didn't mention the most important one America's entitlement this I feel like this is the biggest one of this even episode in in general, like, the fact, the entitlement that Americans have, and, like, just, like, they think they're, like, literally better than everybody, and, like, being, like, um, having a dual citizenship, and being, like, an American, and being a citizen in America also, I, I can see the fucking entitlement that Americans fucking have, they feel like they're fucking better than everyone, so I think it was about, like, a week ago, um, this woman ch- um, posted a thread, uh, um, basically telling Americans to come to Bali because she moved to Bali in the height of the pandemic. So, like, when the pandemic was first starting, and she was like, yo, I am, me and my girlfriend just wanted to come um, to Bali. We're only going to stay, like, a week and, like, stuff like that. But then we just enjoyed how much we loved Bali so much and stuff like that. So she made a whole career over there, and she's self-employed, so she's not paying taxes to the Bali um to the Bali government since she's self-employed. Um, she was like, it's, it's black friendly, it's queer friendly, but like, I was, I was looking at the, um, there was a lot of natives that's from like Indonesia and stuff like that was like, yo, it's not fucking queer friendly. Um, the only reason why like you were, because you're like in Bali, which is like the city and like the city of every place is usually like the most like friendly of thingy, but like people were like, yo, it's not fucking friendly. The, um, muffles will fucking like harass you for being gay if they see you with your girlfriend and stuff like that. So she was being there illegally and not like doing anything. And I'm for like with, um, illegal um deportation and uh, with illegal immigration and stuff like that i'm like yeah you should move to um countries if you want a better life and stuff like that but like with her situation she was like yo in los angeles i was paying like a 15 dollar apartment and then but like here i'm like only paying like 400 dollars for like a luxury um um hut and stuff like that with my girlfriend we about to be the beach it's so pretty and stuff like that so she's kind of like exploiting like the bali people and the bali government and just be like yo come here like and i know the, the the part that was even also funny was like she's encouraging traveling illegally because she was like y'all can just get like a travel visa and just overstay your visa and then she was also saying travel in the middle of a fucking pandemic when the United when the United States have been doing terrible with um the pandemic and stuff like that. So she was like, yo, c- come bring the virus. I thought it's it's just like reviewing like American history again. Like how like the Europeans when they first came to America um to America with the natives, they brought like a disease. So the, now it feels like the it feels like deja vu. It feels like this already happened. So now they're, they're trying to bring COVID to a smaller island and like which will kill way more people. And since it's like a really small island and stuff like that. So and then that's just like a whole small out there and like they were it's like and she just put her put her can on private so i was not really listening to a lot of indonesian people like indonesian people like yo this and and also because like in, um bali is like a is a kind of a poor um indonesia bali kind of, is kind of like a poor place so it's kind of like they rely on tourism but th- but tourism is also extremely deadly because like in order to like um, in, for in, in more tourists are coming, they have to build. They have to like basically like um dismantle graves and stuff, and like build resorts on top of the graves in order to bring more tourists. So and then these tourists are also overstaying their welcomes and are not paying um taxes to the um to the government to allow to allow for the. So it's like a one sided trade, and that's what that one thing is. And also like also with the American entitlements like. For example, with the age family, they're going to Mexico, going to like Cancun and stuff like that, with no mask or anything. So like they're coming from from like a hot spot in LA, that's LA, and just bring them over to like an island in Mexico and stuff like that. And I've seen this with a lot of people who are like going to Mexico and going to Cancun, going to like smaller islands, um, like uh, quote unquote like foreign islands and stuff like that, and just basically like 
bringing diseases to um to to these islands that like are barely surviving but are still surviving so it's that whole entitlement of just be like yo america is shady so i'm just gonna so it's like america's entitlement is so big it's such a huge one that i don't feel like you can completely talk about everything because like um there's different examples like every youtuber has an uh, is literally an embodiment of um um, of entitlement and with the entitlement of how like us Americans are treating um the pandemic as if it's just like eh whatever fuck y'all um and just like the entitlement that like um um I'm not only talking about white Americans by the way I'm talking about every um every American I feel like once you be like once you're like just an American in general like you just have you just go like, I feel like the moment you get your citizenship or something like that you just go another set of entitlement because I because you see this over and over again just like Americans just having this entitlement that they're like better than everybody it better than everything so they can go wherever the fuck they want that like and how like because like the american passport is like golden you can go anywhere but like it's so funny now the american passport is kind of shit it's extremely fucking shit because like a lot of places are like banning american passport because they're like y'all stop bringing diseases over to us like stop bringing fucking diseases over to us and stuff like that so i'm just like it, it feels nice to see the um, tables turn but like they're still going to like smaller islands that like that they're not gonna ban because they want choice attraction, but then they're being so. But these Americans are being so rude and not wearing masks in there. Like, you should. You, it's not even about the mask. It's just about the fact that you're coming from like such a hot spot country and bringing it over to like smaller countries and stuff like that. Just like just the entitlement of like how like they feel like they're doing something and with the Bali trend. People were, um, like, people were trying, it was a black woman who posted it, people were like, um, like, other black women were like, um, you guys are always uh, hating on black women no matter what their hustle is, but I'm just like, I, this is not fucking about race, this is just about American entitlement by itself, because they just continue to just basically, um, continue to do whatever the fuck they want, and, like, people were like, y'all just hating on black women and stuff like that, and then, like, guess what I learned, um, the woman got fucking deported, I was like, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. So, because I was just like, she was just standing legally not, um, she, like, she was literally not, um, also, like, uh, to the government and stuff like that. But with America, export the fucking system. As soon as I start filing independent, I'm about to export the system. So, yeah. And that's basically all I want to say about American entitlement. I'm probably going to have more after I finish rec edit recording this. But, like, because stuff never comes up when I want to. So, yeah. So, I think I'm done with this episode. I think I'm done with, um, so this was like, just like a competition episode towards America. I'm be like, yo, it's time. It's time to talk, babe. So, yeah, I hoped, um, I got some of my points out. If you happen to, to disagree with me, I have a YouTube channel now for this podcast. So, I guess if you're listening on the YouTube channel, I leave a comment. And if you're listening on um, Apple Podcasts, leave a review. Let me know what I'm doing, what's up, and what's popping, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's how I'm doing. How are you doing? So, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to end this podcast. Bye.